So, so have you ever wondered what's going on in the government uh, in terms of the policy space around AI? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. It's pretty important. And so, so today for AI Insights with John Rose, I wanted to invite my friend Nicole, who runs a lot of our government affairs at Dell, to join me. And we're going to have a conversation about the, uh, the governmental intersection and all of the dimensionality to that. So Nicole, maybe share what your, what your role is and what sure. you do in your background. Sure. So, um, so my name is Nick Jefferson and uh, I work for Dell's uh, government affairs team and I work in Washington. My team covers not only federal but also state uh, government relations and we have now recently expanded over to the APJ region as well and LATAM. You know the point of this conversation is most people don't know what's going on. They're yeah. really not aware but yet you know the governmental policy and activity actually do influence the industry. So I, I thought we'd talk about a few different uh, different topics. So sure. the, the first one is you know um, what is the intersection between government and actually AI infrastructure? You know the yeah. build outs that are going on. Most people think it's really private infrastructure but there's a lot happening in that space right now. Absolutely. So um, you know a, a lot of the early AI policy was really focused on responsibility and you know and um, transparency around AI and what they realized is that AI infrastructure is truly the backbone of that innovation um, so what you are seeing now is folks really being focused on energy right they're being focused on where are the data centers going are we incentivizing those how are we investing in those um, so rather than focusing on the the what of AI and all of the you know what somewhat um, theoretical questions mm -hmm. about it. They're really grounding it in that infrastructure piece. And so that's actually what we're spending a lot of our time on now is helping to educate policymakers around how important having reliable and scalable AI infrastructure is to this technology. Yeah, I think it's actually a good thing because some of the early AI dialogues with government were, were very, um, I don't know, old school theoretical. They were <laughs> kind of these high level trying to make AI work like government. Yeah. And that doesn't work, but if they get into the business of, hey, how do we make AI infrastructure happen faster and we become an enabler, that's probably a more, I don't know, useful and impactful role for government. Absolutely. I mean, especially now, I think what they're realizing is whoever really is at the front of that AI infrastructure game is really competitive. So yeah. the narrative has moved less, um, or has moved away from this theoretical conversation and more grounded in the picks and shovels of AI yeah. because that's actually, they recognize, that's how we're gonna stay competitive, yeah. um, especially, you know, certainly in the US landscape, but I think that's global. Yeah, yeah, we've seen big uh, announcements out of Europe, yeah. Middle East, and this is Absolutely. definitely a phenomenon that's happening. So, so maybe, uh, you know, uh, you were telling me about another dimension of government interest right now, and it's around AI skilling, yeah. um, which, you know, it's a big topic, how do we educate our workforce, et cetera, but again, you know, hadn't seen a lot of real cogent activity coming out of the government yet on this, but uh, seems like there's some, some new activity there. Yes, yeah, there are recent executive orders in the US. Um, President Trump has really started to focus on um, AI skilling as far as K through 12, but also upskilling and reskilling. Um, and so Dell is figuring out ways to partner with the administration as as others are, but, um, but I think we have done a really good job of um, creating programs and skilling for our customers, for our partners, and if we can bring that to the public sector, if we can ensure that that accelerates, because that's that's the only way this is gonna win, right? It's, it's, that, it's actually kind of a part of the sustainability of that infrastructure, is making sure that people can use that, they have the skills for it. So. Yeah, I did a, a, one of these talks, we were talking about the value, it was a Mythbusters episode where we were saying, you know, some people believe that like skilling and the technology are not actually all that dependent on each other. Oh my goodness. And you know, there's a lot of people who don't have skilling strategies Roll yeah. out technology, and our experience has been exactly the opposite. That that if you invest in educating your workforce, getting them comfortable with the technology, getting them exposed to it early, when you actually give them an AI tool, the adoption rate is almost instantaneous. Yeah. If you don't do that, they kind of go, I don't know what this thing is, and it might take six or eight months before people start using it. And so that correlation actually happened in Dell. We saw both scenarios, and, and we figured out which one we wanted. And as you know, we, we invested heavily in AI education, and most of it was optional, but yet the vast majority of our team members decided they wanted to do this training, and they asked for more. And it's it's interesting, you know, in the, at least in the private sector, we have seen that, you know, 
the correlation between an educated, aware, AI-enabled workforce and AI efforts and implementations is actually pretty tight. Yeah, absolutely. I think people are hungry for that skill, right? The more that they recognize that in order for them to be a part of the workforce, not just of tomorrow, but of today, that they have to have those skills, um, you know, I, I think they're they're hankering for it. I know I took those trainings and was really happy that I did. So, um, and then you, you extrapolate that out, right, to the future and say, we also need to have um, a training again through K through 12 and college students that are ready to enter the workforce yep. of tomorrow and, and have those skills ready to, to launch. So, yeah. what, One other thing that we, we, we said at D Dell Technologies World this year was that the you're, <laughs> there are no technologies anywhere in the IT sector today that are not either enabled by, enabling, or in some way dependent on AI. Absolutely. You, you cannot find a technology anywhere that AI is not touching. And so the, the conclusion from that, though, is if you are an IT professional and you want to work in this industry, it doesn't matter what job you're doing. Mm -hmm. There is going to be AI there. And yep. so it becomes a foundational skill. And so you know, that, that awareness that that's actually what's going on is, is critical in the private sector. Guess what? Every job, every function in the public sector is going to have exactly the same scenario. AI is going Absolutely. to be the underlying technology for all of it. Absolutely. So maybe a, a third topic, which is you know, both interesting to me, but the bane of my existence as the chief AI officer, which is the regulatory regimes, the, the entities that are asserting rules around AI. Because there are over 700 jurisdictions around the world that have AI regulations that are telling me how I should do those and they don't even talk to each other. They're conflicting, they're confused, they are usually out of date before they're written, and yet there's 700 of them and many of them have penalties. Yeah. And so we have a, in, you know, purely as a chief AI officer, this is not sustainable, this is a gigantic mess, and if we don't do something different, eventually we run out of things to do in the non-regulated world, we're gonna actually slow the whole AI cycle down pretty significantly. So that's my rant. Um, <laughs> you're really close to government. You know, What are you seeing in terms of the, is, is, are there any bright lights? Is there any appetite to maybe do this better? Yeah, um, there are use cases that would be fantastic, but you are staying away from them because of the regulatory yeah. structure, which means that that is slowing down innovation and adoption. And we can't have that, right? Yep. We just, you know, we, we simply can't. And so I do think that there are some bright lights because again, as those conversations were happening over the past couple of years and around generative AI in particular, I think we've entered this new space yep. where um, policymakers are saying, well, wait a minute, we can't slow down the speed of innovation. We have to find the right balance. Um, but at the same time, there remain those jurisdictions that, again, are still kind of stuck in that um, the previous conversations, and yep. they are continuing to try to regulate, sure, regulate those things that are kind of the the low-hanging fruit, right? The things that we can all kind of agree need yeah. to be done. But once you get to those really hairy issues, you pointed to exactly the right thing. There needs to be conversations cross-jurisdictionally. Because right. that's how, I mean, we, we are yeah. a global economy, right? Yep. We cannot work market to market to market. Exactly. We need to have some certainty across the globe. And so I think we're starting to see that in Europe, right? They're kind of pulling yep. back some of their regulations that they um, you know, were kind of first to, to market mm -hmm. to do. We're certainly seeing that at the federal level in the U.S., we're still seeing a lot of um, disparate uh, policies happening at the state level, yeah. but we are recognizing that governors, others are hungering for some sort yeah. of consistency yeah. at a broader level, and so hopefully that wins the day. Yeah. So, so Nick, what, what is Dell doing to engage with the, the government to kind of help, yeah. help, I don't know, shape this so that it ends up in the right, right place? Sure. So, um, Gosh, back in March, um, there was a request for information that came out from the U.S. government, um, from the Office of Science and Technology, and you know what? We we answered, right? And what we gave was our uh, what we call our AI blueprint, and we really discussed where we think there needs to be focus um, from the U.S. government in order for the AI infrastructure really to again be a competitive advantage for the U.S. We talked about things like skilling. We talked about um, you know, the need to invest in infrastructure. We talked about energy and energy efficiency and the fact that we really do need to focus on that because the, the wave of the future with AI, that's really gonna have an impact on the, the data centers of the future. Um, and public-private partnerships, right? Um, you know, 
certainly per this conversation, the public sector can't do it alone. Uh, we do need to be in those conversations with them. We have a lot to offer. Um, we have a lot of ideas. We are at the front of that innovation. And so that was a part of that, that blueprint. And I expect we will continue to have those conversations. We're expecting the, the outcome of that AI action plan, um, which should inform what Congress is really going to prioritize um, coming sometime this summer. But, you know, that's just the start of it. And I think we'll continue to have those conversations with the administration, with Congress, um, and with agencies on a, you know, kind of one-to-one -one basis to make sure that our perspective is heard and that industry is at the table. Yeah. Two, two observations about our, you know, our response and input to that AI action plan. The first was we were very candid with yeah. the government. We were, this was not like an RFI response where we wanted to tell them what they wanted to hear. For instance, on public par partnership, we, we were clear that the government by itself can't move at the speed necessary to navigate AI. They have to be Correct. very close to the private sector that's actually doing the work. And that may not be their preferred approach, but they were very open to hearing that speed matters and you can't do this at government speed. You have to do it at the speed of the industry. And I think being able to have that open conversation was very helpful. Uh, the other interesting byproduct is we did that with the U.S. government and then the EU kind of came out with some mm -hmm. new ideas and it was surprising how aligned we were. That's right. That without being prompted, we kind of looked, if we could do this for any government, it should look like this. And the, the EU framework that they're now navigating towards actually is extremely similar and, and quite yeah. frankly that tells us that hey, we're probably all kind of starting to get consensus around what the right answer is here. That's right and um, you know what is also quite fascinating is while we're still waiting for that action plan you know we're seeing the administration and others like yeah. you said the EU take some of those recommendations and kind yeah. of run with them already. Yeah. Um, certainly around, for example, research and development and investment in that space. Um, so again, I, I think we are fairly aligned and, and we're seeing again that movement to the second wave of, of policy and I'm glad that we're at the table for it. So any, uh, any, uh, any closing thoughts on next adventures? What, you know, you're, what are you going to be doing in the next six months in the AI oh, world? Oh <laughs> my goodness. I wish I could, I could predict. I think agentic AI is going to be quite the conversation, um, you know, and I think it's going to connect to the skilling conversation, the workforce conversation, so I expect that will be happening. I really do think we're going to see some uh, additional focus on how do we really get the goodness out of AI and how do we really focus on competition and um, and it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 all we know is it's going to be exciting and it's going to yep. be interesting. So Nick, thanks, right. for, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic conversation. Thanks. thanks. Okay.